four miles from the seafloor and a mile into the warm trade winds of the North Atlantic Ocean are the dramatic cliffs and spires of Madeira. The place of legend since Roman and Viking seafarers first gazed upon these cliffs 
Madeira's fertile slopes were eventually claimed by Portugal in 1419 and settled soon after. The volcanic activity may have settled down millennia ago, but the island-rich soils and spring climate means Madeira explodes in lush vegetation all year round. Madeira's capital, Funchal, was named after a wild fennel which once carpeted its hillsides. Situated on the island's southern coast and with a population of just over 100,000, this is the island's only true city. Madeira may be closer to Africa than it is to Portugal, but in Funchal, the textures of Lisbon are never far away. Walk streets paved with patterned stonework that evokes the spirit of Portuguese culture and pride. Explore centuries-old churches and homes which have endured pirate raids, German U-boat attacks and earthquakes. Umschal is filled with fabulous museums, but for nature lovers, Madeira's finest exhibits are found outside. Set high on a sunny slope over the city, the botanical gardens of Madeira showcase the plants which thrive across the island's diverse biomes. The gardens feature rare species native to the island, as well as hundred more brought here by green-thumbed sailors and settlers throughout the ages. Just two miles away, at the Palheiro Gardens, Stretch your legs along the trails that wind through sweet-scented woodlands and exquisite flower beds centuries in the making. As Funchal developed in the 1800s, wealthy residents moved further up the hillside to escape the noise and smell of the bustling port. If you're seeking a little serenity, Ride the cable car to Mont Palace Tropical Garden, which features olive trees dating back to Roman times, tranquil Japanese gardens, and mosaics depicting great moments in Portuguese history. While Madeira's formal gardens are impressive, it's often the more practical plots that steal the show. From Funchal, head west, along the coast of the neighboring town of Camarat Lobos, where grapes and bananas ripen on terraces. Vegetable fields cling to the edges of cliffs and the fruits of the sea drying the salty breeze. Camara de Lobos is the gateway to Cabo Girão, one of the world's mightiest cliffs. Take a deep breath and step out upon the glass cliff walk, the highest in all Europe. And yes, those are crops down there. But there is farmers will plant wherever the soil is good and the growing conditions at the base of Cabo Girão are the most highly prized on the island. You will find plenty of colossal views, just a 15-minute drive east of Funchal too. At Querajau, follow the steady gaze of the Sacred Heart statue out to sea and watch divers far below enjoying the undersea gardens of the marine reserve. If you feel like joining them, ride the cable car down to the clear waters below. While Madeira certainly can't lay claim to the world's sandiest beaches, its dramatic cliffs, warm waters and coastal towns more than compensate. Just around the corner, in Canisu, Reis Magos Beach is the perfect place to chill out and enjoy a little reflexology. You will find plenty of places to cool off in the neighboring Santa Cruz too. After your swim, follow the promenade beneath the battlements of Fort San Fernando, past palm trees and pastry shops and into the whitewashed embrace of the old town.
latest modern ring road and tunnel system strings together coastal towns and beaches, each one a little different from the last. If you're looking for the island's sunniest spot, head to Ponta do Sol. If you've got a sweet tooth, relax in a cafe in the old sugar town of Arpo da Calheta and enjoy a homemade honey cake. And if the rumbling sound of breakers echoing off the cliffs is your idea of relaxation, spend a night or two at Paul do Mar. While Madeira's south coast offers the best sunshine, the north coast offers plenty of drama and adventure. Feel the power of the wild Atlantic in the natural swimming pools of Porto Muniz. From the town of Seixal, hike the Levadas into Madeira's mist-covered interior. While at San Vicente, Descend into the caves and lava tubes and learn about the volcanic forces which shape this island. After exploring Madeira's underground world, treat yourself to a blast of pure Atlantic air at Ponta de São Lourenço, the island's easternmost point. Follow the path along the narrow peninsula, which dips like a dragon's tail into the sea only to resurface again in the far-off deserted islands. Once you've explored the coastline, head to the mountains, where the landscape becomes even more extreme. Less than an hour drive from Funchal is Pico do Arieiro, Madeira's third highest peak. Even at this harsh altitude, where the views stretch away forever, Vegetation finds a home amid the nooks and crannies. From here, experienced hikers can head off along the knife hedge trails to even higher peaks. The same peaks that guided Portuguese explorers to Madeira 600 years ago. explorers first stepped ashore on Madeira's southern shores, they dropped into their knees in grateful prayer, and the outpost of Mexico was born. Just a few decades later, church bells echoed off the newly terraced slopes. Forts guarded the town from passing pirates, and mills crushed sugarcane into liquid gold. Each spring, the citizens of Mexico and towns all across Madeira decorate their streets with floral carpets and give thanks for their island's riches and bounty. Once you've bathed in Madeira's waters, walked its gardens and touched its clouds, you'll be giving thanks too.